Uh, and that's one use for it. Another use for it is actually modeling. And so what I like to do is, let's go ahead and delete both of these here. Select this one, delete it. And we'll go ahead and drop this canvas here. So what I'm going to do is start with a sphere, drag that out, make it polymesh 3D, hit X to go in uh, cross X symmetry mode here. There we go. And now uh, let's start sculpting a skull. So I'm going to go to Z add here, and I know skulls can be sculpted like this, a little nose in here, and a little mouth and head, and that's that's about all all I know about skulls. Actually, let's go in here and we'll do a little clip. So skulls are something like this, right? <laughs> and we'll do smooth stronger, so I can kind of smooth this guy down a little bit. There we go. That's uh, that's a skull-like shape, correct? Now. Let's bring in some skull reference, and I'm going to use Spotlight as kind of a reference guide for the skull. So what I'm going to do is go into Texture, Import, and let's go to through a skull turnaround in here. So I'm going to grab this texture in here, and I'm going to add it to Spotlight. So now we have a skull texture in here. So I can use this to help sculpt and have provide reference. And I'm just going to do like these first three views here. So I'm going to scale it up because I'm doing a demo in here. So I'm going to get as much real estate in here as I can for you. So you can kind of see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to hit Z to go into Spotlight Sculpting Mode. And I can go through here and I can kind of position my skull here. And I can go, okay, his cranium needs to be a little bit bigger. It bothers me, so I'm going to turn off line cursor service. There we go. So I can go here and I can go ahead and clip this back. And I can clip this up. And I'm probably going to need to make this a Dynamesh really quick. So project off, blur off, Dynamesh. There we go. And now we know if I go into Standard Brush Mode and crank up that intensity, here's where our nose hole is and our eye hole and you're gonna see as I'm sculpting back through it's actually capturing some of that details so I don't really need all that uh, but I can certainly use that to my advantage if I want to and then I can go to my three-quarter here and at this point I probably want to turn on perspective and if I want to I can actually keep perspective on the whole time with one caveat so I can go ahead and uh, knock this back a little bit here and uh, maybe use the move brush so I can kind of move and I can sculpt back behind here while I have this uh, up and kind of match the underlying image. Hold on shift and redynamesh and push this in here. There we go. Now, uh, a caveat with uh, perspective turned on. You're going to notice if I hit shift Z to get rid of that. Here I am with perspective turned on, right? Now, as I move over here to the left, you're going to see it kind of starts warping a little bit. And as I move over here to the right, it starts warping this way. That's a feature, but that's probably not something you want if you want to match reference that's divided up like this. So I'm going to keep perspective on, but what I'm going to do is go over here to the draw menu and I'm going to do align to object. So as, I, as I'm as i in perspective mode, I'm still in perspective, so if I turn that off, it's orthographic against perspective, but as I go to the left and as I go to the right, it just keeps it perspective aligned to the object. It doesn't start warping based on how far I am to either side of the document. So that's number one. Number two, you're probably going to want to go back to this camera angle again. So instead of like going over here and then, oh, let's go back and check what I've done so far and go back over here and try and reposition, let's go ahead and save those camera views. Now we've talked already about over here with the document menu, going in here and using Zapling properties. So you can actually go in here and you can actually position this and you can go, uh, we'll call this front and we'll call this custom one and we'll call this ooh, way off there and then call this uh, left and now we have these stored so as I go through here and I can touch these um, obviously back you don't want to see but front's fine and then right's fine and custom one is fine you can click through them that way a better way I think is to uh, clear all these and let's go ahead and go into movie and we touched on this a little bit too but we're gonna go to timeline show so we've got a timeline up here now. I'm going to go to the front here and when I get settled into the front I'm going to tap that timeline. I'm going to set a view to the front view and I'm going to move that timeline. It doesn't really matter how many but I'm just going to go to the right a little bit and then I'm going to position this. I'm going to tap that timeline again. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to tap the timeline here. So now what I can do is I can use my arrow keys to go left and right and now I can very quickly go between these views so I can kind of fine-tune my skull as I work. So I'm going to get the, I'm not going to sit here and sculpt a skull uh, while you wait, um, but let's go ahead and at least get him kind of close-ish. There we go, good enough. And I'll go through here, and because I have Spotlight on, 
Um, it's going to want to sculpt that detail through here. So what I can do is just temporarily turn that off and just kind of build this up a little bit because I know this needs to be rounded out here. There we go. So I got a pretty good start on my skull. And then no matter where I've gone, I can hit the this key and this key to kind of cycle back through. And then I use my move brush again to kind of bounce that. So now let's say I've already sculpted this thing and it's really, really close and I want to start poly painting some detail information. So one thing I can do is let's go ahead and uh, hit Control D to subdivide. And I'll go ahead and turn uh, Dynamesh off, which for you would be under Geometry Dynamesh over here. So you can turn that off. And we're going to turn off Z Add. We're going to do RGB. And because I have RGB information and I have standard brush, I can go ahead and paint this RGB information to the front. And then I can hit the right arrow key because we have that saved. And I can keep continue painting along the side here. And I can hit the arrow key. <laughs> And it's still way off, and I can continue painting. Um, let's go ahead and just help him out just a little bit here. Okay, so we've got these details on here. Now, if you want to use this as just RGB color information, that's fine. Another thing you can do is I'm going to crank this RGB intensity down a little bit and go to Color, Fill Object. I'm just going to knock that RGB intensity down, and then I can actually use this as a guide. So I'll turn Z Add back on, and I can go through here and just kind of like go and determine where my cracks are going to be. So even if you're not going to use it as poly paint information, you can use it to kind of go in and detail up, you know, where you're going to want these details to be. Now obviously this skull is not ready to be detailed, uh, but just <laughs> demonstrating a couple of different techniques. Once you get there and the skull looks really nice, you can go ahead and start doing that.